welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. It is September 15th, 2021, and this is live episode number 209. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. Sorry to be a few minutes late, but I had a die that disappeared on me. <laughs> I needed to find that before tonight's live stream. So welcome. Happy Wednesday. Happy middle of September. Cannot believe it is September 15th. Uh, we celebrated Nolan's birthday this past weekend. He turned six and we took him to Legoland. He was totally in his element. I do have two pieces of show and tell for you today. So I'm going to go grab those really quickly because I know many of you missed show and tell. We had to get into the swing of things with... Um, the new school year, etc. Let me say hello really quickly to a few of you and then I'll grab show and tell and then we will jump into tonight's projects. Oh, happy birthday, Jeannie, to your baby. Um, that's awesome. Hi, Carla. Hi, Michelle. Barbara Jean. Hello, hello. Julaine, Tammy, Cindy, Diane, Carla, Michelle, Tony, Joe, Deborah, Christine. Hey, hey. Welcome. Oh, it is, of course, raining again here in Georgia, which is always seems to always like to do that on Wednesday nights. So hold on one moment. I'm going to go grab show and well, no, let me tell you about up to date. The updates with Stampin' Up! really quickly. We have got two weeks left of celebration. So if you haven't yet taken advantage of the freebie celebration items that you can earn with orders of $50 or $100. Make sure you do that. I do believe that the Be Dazzling paper is gone for good. It was while supplies last. I don't think that it's coming back. Don't quote me on that. I don't know the scoop yet. It's been a hectic day at work. So, um, But make sure you take advantage of celebration. That ends on September 30th. There's three ways to earn free stuff during celebration. One is to place orders of 50 or 100. Two is to place an order of $300 or more, and you'll get to choose the, in your words, host stamp set, which is a series of amazing sentiments all pulled together by demonstrators across the world. And then three, which is my favorite, is the starter kit. You can select up to $125 in product of your choice for 99 plus you get to add one of 12 bundles for free which is an additional $60.25 in value if you pick the most expensive one which is what I would do and um, that also affords you all the amazing perks that come with being a demonstrator I'd love to welcome you to my team of paper pixies and welcome you home to the Stampin' Up! family if you have any questions about that feel free to reach out my host code let's do that really quickly for the month of September, my host code is J-E-Y-X-E-D-D-A. If you place an order of $50 or more, you'll get to choose one of the free gifts you see up on the screen here. Um, if your order is over $150, don't apply the host code because you'll earn stampin' rewards on that order, but you'll still get to choose one of my free gifts, so don't worry about that. If you don't already have a demonstrator or you haven't ordered from me in a long time and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request with me at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. Hold tight. Let me go grab the kids show and tell and then we'll jump right into tonight's project. Let me go ahead and switch the cameras. Let's do that. Picture in picture. All right, I'll be right back. We'll do the messy one first. So Lily is doing non-literal day tomorrow is that right so for her reading class colors look a little bit off but she got brian went and picked her up a t-shirt today and we got some of that fun puffy paint and she wanted to be a piece of cake today <laughs> so or for tomorrow we added real sprinkles to the paint while it was wet so of course we looked at the instructions and it says it needs 24 hours to dry so we're just gonna see what happens when we go to the bus tomorrow let's hope that the paint tries to stay in place so that's lily's piece of cake t-shirt i thought that was so cute she's my little artist and then nolan as we mentioned we took him to legoland and he picked out this ninjago lego set this is i believe it's a rhinoceros but it's got this really cool like rubber band functionality to it, but we had fun. Now, Nolan sometimes likes to move in a hurry, so Mommy had to rebuild a few parts of it, but I, I love putting together Legos too. So 
one of my favorite things to do is follow those instructions and see what you can create with it. So that is Nolan's show and tell. His will almost always be Legos, I think. So he got, I think everything he got for his birthday with the exception of a few things were Lego sets. So he's been not even choosing to watch any TV, just doing Lego sets. So this is tonight's project. We are only doing this project tonight because this is, I don't want to put you off. It's not totally complicated, but we've got some diagonal score lines. I want to give a shout out for the inspiration to Ann Melvin from, from Positively Paper Craft. And she did a tutorial of this project. Oh, it's been a few years ago now when she used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And I'm obsessed with this box. She called it a tapered triangular box or tapered triangle box, I think. And that's a really good description for this box. I love the fact that the sides do taper or I guess not slope, but it is a really cute box. The triangle on the bottom is four is a four inch uh, length equilateral triangle. And the one on the top is three inches. So it's got that really nice tapered, um, I guess, accent on the side. This is using the products from, and you may have missed it, but in the annual catalog, on pages 88 and 89, the Tidings of Christmas Suite. So I'm using the Tidings of Christmas 6x6 six six designer series paper, and you may not be ready for Christmas projects yet, but I know that a lot of the Halloween stuff is low inventory or back ordered, and um, I think some of the fall stuff, we'll jump into fall probably next week, but I was in a mood to create some Christmas stuff. So this box will be easily adaptable for different holidays, so don't worry about that. And it just opens here. We've got a lid, um, a tuck in lid at the top and it's a pretty good size. It's one inch wide and you could throw in a handful of peppermints or you could put maybe some jewelry in there. I'm sure there's lots of wrapped, you know, Werther's would be really cute in there. Um, all kinds of good stuff. So it's four inches around the, tri it's hard to describe because it's a triangle, but it's four along the bottom and three along the top and it's an inch in height. So this would be so cute for a table favor or even just a sweet little gift for teachers around the holidays. And we are using, again, the Tidings and Trimmings Bundle. That's where the star came from and this really cute holly. Now there are holly berries in the die set. I'll show you the die set closer here in a bit. Um, but I used the matte, what are they called? The decorative matte dots, matte decorative dots. Um, but those were super cute. I didn't have the patience to put glue on the mini berries in the die set because that's how I roll. But then this is using the Banners Pick-A-Punch and I just love this. Now you might wonder how we got the triangle. That comes from the stitched triangles dies. So I love those. I tried to figure out measurements for you to cut that triangle yourself and it was going to be some really weird measurements. And I was like, nope, we're just going to use the stitch triangles and make it easy. So if you don't already have the stitch triangles, I highly recommend you adding that to your stash. So again, 88 and 89 in the annual catalog. Love this suite of products. Again, it's in the annual catalog. You may have missed it, but love it. So tidings of Christmas suite. All right, let's jump into it. Um, now, Ann Melvin's version was eight and a half by four and a half. I pixified it a bit because you know that's how I roll. So this one is actually four and a half, but by nine. Okay, four and a half by nine. This project, including a shortened video tutorial, the template measurements and everything will be on my blog on Friday. So hang tight for that. Just enjoy the show. Watch us put this together. It's really fun to do. And the template will be key in, um, making sure that you're scoring correctly. I'm gonna to try to walk you through that and make that really, really easy. I forgot to mention that my husband, Brian, is here watching for your comments. So if you have questions, he'll pop those up on the screen for me. I couldn't do this live stream without him, so grateful for that. All right, simply, simply scored. I'm gonna bring this guy out. I gotta get my measurements, because there's a, not a lot, but there's a couple of, it takes a minute, so, <laughs> all right. On the four and a half inch side, so the short side, we are gonna score this at one inch. Okay, then I'm gonna rotate it clockwise so we have that one inch section at the top here. We are gonna go make a tick mark at half of an inch. So when I say a tick mark, 
taking the ball tip of my stylus and I'm going to press down at the half inch mark. Next, I'm going to score, but only down to the first score line, these next one, two, three, four, five score lines. So we're going to do one and stop at the score line, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so tick mark at half an inch, score lines to that first horizontal score line at one, four, five, six, and seven. Now I'm going to rotate it 180, then we've got our little one inch section at the bottom now, and this side we're only going to make tick marks. We're going to make four of them, again, ball tip, pressing right at the top of the simply scored. We're going to do one, two, six, and seven. Okay, so one, two, six, and seven. And that's all we need for the Simply Scored. Hold on to your stylus, or you can use the stylus from the uh, Take Your Pick tool. I'm gonna grab my trusty ruler here. Let me bring in the template, because this will help me explain and also keep me on track here. Here is the template. It's such a cool looking template. I love these diagonal score lines. So. I'm gonna to try to push that up to the top here. I guess we'll go down here. All right, so I like to go from left to right here. I'm gonna start with this first diagonal score line. This is gonna go from where that one inch score line meets the edge of the cardstock on the diagonal down to that first tick mark, okay? So I like to grab my stylus and kind of get that started first then bring the ruler to it. You wanna make sure you're leaving space for the ball tip of the stylus, and then we'll score. Then we're gonna slide it over an inch, and we're gonna go from that first score line diagonally down to that second tick mark. Again, referencing the template here will make this much easier. Now I'm gonna rotate and we're gonna to go to the third score line and score sort of like, what is that, a um, forward slash direction? <laughs> we're gonna score from this down to that first tick mark again. We're gonna have some overlapping of the score lines and that is normal. Then we're gonna slide down to the fourth score line at the top, down to the second tick mark on the bottom. Okay, so let me show you that up close. You can see that almost like a chevron pattern. I don't even know what to call that. Really cool geometric pattern there. Now we're gonna go again to this one, well, technically one, two, three, the third score line here. We're gonna go on the diagonal now to the one, two, third tick mark on the bottom. So one, two, three, three to three here. Make sure I'm doing that in the right direction. Then we're gonna go four to four. Then five to the corner. So this one all the way down to the corner. Okay, let me show you that. So we've got those three lines here. Now we're gonna go from the one to third score line diagonally up to that one inch score line. And again, you'll see that here on the template. I'm in the lights here, so I wanna make sure I get that right. Let's see. And we only have one more score line to do, okay? So we did these two first. Let me show you on the template. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can kind of see a pattern appearing on here. Now I'm gonna rotate this and rotate my cardstock as well. And we've got that little half inch tick mark that we added down here. We're gonna score from there up to the edge of the cardstock where it meets that one inch score line. This is just to help us cut our cardstock next, okay? 
So again, it's just, you could, you could easily just take a pair of scissors and cut that as well. You don't have to do the score line. Okay, and you know what? I did totally, I didn't totally goof. This score line here, so that's one, two, three, four. The fifth score line we did, I forgot we were supposed to go all the way to that top edge. That is easy to fix. So I'm just gonna line up my ruler then right there. You do wanna line it, sorry, you do wanna line it up with this tick mark and this tick mark but you just continue scoring to the top edge. That's gonna help us create our tab for closing the box. So I'm just gonna keep continuing that score line. That's the only one that you're gonna go all the way to the top. I don't know if you can see that, but that forms then those edges for the tabs, okay? Now I'm gonna leave the template out because we're gonna do some cutting first and I want you to be able to see where uh what we're what we are removing so i'm going to turn the cardstock this way or the template this way and the cardstock i'm going to come in and remove this lower corner so we're just cutting right on that score line uh, my service is just a little bit padded it's like a neoprene um, desk pad did my camera freeze it looks like we have frozen oh here we go okay it is a neoprene desk pad, so it does have a little bit of give. Great question. So that does help with the scoring. You still get a pretty good score even on a hard surface, but I do find that that give gives um, a little bit of extra for the scoring. You, I love the stamp and pierce mat if you don't have sort of a desk pad like this. All right, so we are going to score or to cut on that little short score line. Again, if you don't want to score it, you can just cut from the tick mark to where that one inch score line meets the edge. Then I'm gonna come in and cut up this vertical score line and stop at the horizontal. Same thing over here, the next one to the left. And then I'm gonna cut on the angle here. So let me show you. We remove that corner. We've got this tab, this tab, and then this big section. Now I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn. We're gonna remove this whole one inch section all the way up to that next diagonal score line or that tab that we just created like that so we've removed that piece okay we also want to remove this large piece here so i'm going to fold those tabs out of the way to isolate it and then remove that completely oops so the bottom is looking pretty good, okay? Now I'm gonna turn it this way. We are going to remove this triangular corner. The Matt Nina I got from Amazon, it's listed on my favorites page at thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. I can pop that up on the screen. Sometimes it's hard to get in stock. There is a couple of different wood surfaces and um, I think there's a marble surface and a concrete surface. Um, but it is by Ness, N-E-S-S, -S, Home. Um, I love it. I have a couple of them. I've got a different wood surface that I used to use at the beginning of my lives, and I've switched to this one, but they're great. All right, so we're going to cut this entire triangle off in the lower right corner now because we've got it in this orientation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You could use your paper trimmer for that too or a bigger pair of scissors, whatever you prefer. And then we're also gonna remove this triangle right here because we don't need it. Like that, so that's what we end up with, okay? Now the last couple of cuts we're gonna make, I am gonna cut up right on this little diagonal here. We're turning this guy into a tab. It doesn't necessarily matter which way you cut it, but I like to cut it from left to right on the angle. So then we've got that little triangle there. Let's fold and burnish, and then I will trim away a couple of other pieces, just like we're gonna um, miter cut some tabs. We're gonna do a little bit of that. So now that we've done all of the cutting, it makes it really easy to fold and burnish. So we can go ahead and do that on all the score lines. Since it's diagonal pieces, it's harder to score before you cut.
And then we'll get these little tabs too. I just folded those over manually without burnishing. So we've got that. Now, this is considered a little tab here, this little triangle. So I'm just gonna come in and just miter cut that slightly. It's weird to miter cut because it is a triangle piece, but I just do your best. Just a little bit of slivers that I cut off of that. You can kind of see that like there. Oh, this is um, Evening Evergreen. Thank you, I totally flaked on that. Um, Evening Evergreen, one of my favorite greens, such a classic. And then the last piece that we're gonna uh, miter cut on is just this little edge here. This is actually gonna tuck into our box as I throw my paper snips around and I'm just gonna gently miter cut on that like so. You could trim this down if you needed to but it's not necessary to fit in the box. So. That's the basics of this. Now I'm going to glue our triangle down next. It's easier to do this now than um, after we put the box together. So let me show you. Do I have those dies out? Maybe. Here they are. I haven't even moved these into my new pockets yet. These are what the stitched triangles dies look like. And I'm using the the second smallest, so two in. So the largest, this is the equilateral triangle and it's the next one in, okay? And I love these because they've got stitching on them. Those are super fun. You've got, what is that? Equilateral, right triangle and isosceles, I believe. Um, all right, so I cut that from the uh, Tidings and Trimmings Designer Series paper. Is that what it's called? I believe so. Hold on. I'm just going to show you this really quickly. I don't have my um, swatch book out. Tidings of Christmas. And the colors in here I love. Cherry Cobbler, Evening Evergreen, Misty Moonlight, Sahara Sand, Soft Succulent, and Whisper White. It is a beautiful... You get lots of multiples with this, which makes it great for... Ooh, that would have been a pretty pattern for this one, too. Makes it great for your Christmas cards. So just going to give you an idea of the patterns there. Really pretty. All right, so I cut that again. That was the, not the largest, but the second largest. I don't even know how you say that. Confuse, I confuse myself. I'm going to grab my liquid glue and then we'll put this beauty, beauty together. And I hope you'll give it a try. I hope that you're not um, turned away by all the diagonal score lines. Totally worth it for the end result. And I hope I've made it pretty easy for you to follow. So we'll just go ahead. This is not really a directional pattern, so it's pretty easy to put on here. We got that guy down. Now you could do a finger notch here if you needed to, but because this is a tapered edge, and this was driving me nuts before, but it's gonna pop out just a little bit because imagine this is folding in at a little bit of an angle and obviously our paper is gonna wanna go straight up and down at a right angle. So it pops out a little bit, but it makes it really easy for the recipient to open. All right, now let's put this beauty together. I like to start with our little triangle tab here. So let me just show you how this is gonna go together before we add the glue. So that triangle tab, we're gonna glue it down there and create that really cool tapered corner. Then this piece, we're gonna glue into the box, that little weird shaped piece that we didn't really need to trim. Then we're gonna glue this down, okay? And that's it just the two parts that need to be glued down then the tabs will fold in and then this will tuck in okay so let's start with our little triangle here if you don't have the triangle that is a really good question i promise you i tried to figure it out the size of the triangle um so give me some time and when i do my blog post on friday i will try to give you the measurements to create that triangle. It's, um, you know, triangles are sometimes hard to um, cut and figure out the right measurements that will fit this, but I will do my best to figure that out for Friday's blog post. All right, so liquid glue on the triangle. And then we're gonna go ahead and take your time here because you really want that to be a really nice corner. 
So we're lining up the cut edge with the score line. It's going to give us that tapered edge. I even typed into um, like a triangle calculator and it was giving me some crazy decimal numbers and I'm like, nope, <laughs> I'm just going to use the die set for now because um, that'll take some time to figure out the right size. All right, so there's that. So next, and remember we cut that little sliver off here and that was just to make sure that that didn't bump into the edge of the cardstock. We're just going to put liquid glue on this little weird shaped isosceles triangle piece. And then I'm just going to line up this cut edge with that score line. And the liquid glue gives you a chance to slide things into place. I do have my hand, <clears throat> excuse me, here on the inside. And I'm just making sure that that's all lined up first. And then I can come in with my bone folder or even your hand, to be honest, just press from the inside. That's true, Gail. You could trace it um, for the DSP. The interesting thing, it's the height that's the issue. So the, um, I put my ruler down. So this triangle, I know the sides. So this is about, oh, see, it's two and it's just over two and three quarters. The trick is you got to get the height right. <laughs> now the height on here is saying two and a half. So we could get it close, but it's not going to be, you just got, the problem is you got to start with the right size so that you can get the right angle, um, that 60 degree angle, right? It's 60 on an equilateral, 60, 60, and 60. Yes. That's the hard part is getting the right height and width in order to cut it equal. So, uh, too much geometry for today. <laughs> okay. So we can press from the inside here. And that box, it looks like a really cool pizza box too, doesn't it? So we'll just tuck in our tabs. Now those will fit perfectly in there. You're going to have that weird angle because again, we're working with diagonals here. And then this is just going to tuck in. Okay. Like so. Love that. It's so cute. Now you could have this designed. I designed it with um, sort of in a pizza shape, right? Now I was trying to figure out why I couldn't get this to stay put. So let me see if I can do this on camera before I just tucked it in the box so I could really burnish that because I want to train that paper. But the funny part is it's kind of impossible to get it out. <laughs> so let's see if I can do it live. Oh, it's coming. Okay. So let's try. Let's see if we trained it. That's pretty good. There we go. It's just trying to train that to go just past the 45 degree angle. Okay. Or 90 degree angle. Gosh, too many numbers tonight. Okay. <laughs> so, and I need to look up this. I never remember this paper. It's beautiful. And you probably, or you may not have noticed it, but look at that. It's got this texture to it. I don't know if you can hear it. Um, it's almost like a, a fabric. Um, I don't even know how to call it. When I was putting that together for my product shares, I fell in love with it. So it is on page. It's on the specialty paper page. Pardon me for not having this pulled up ahead of time. Here we go. You probably aren't even going to know that it's there. It is right here in the corner of page 135. This is called the gold and rose gold metallic specialty paper. It's got a textured brushed metallic text, well, textured brushed metallic paper. And you've got white on the back. This reminds me of the backing of our designer series papers, but it's gorgeous. So we die cut that from, let me show you the, the uh, bundle we're using tonight. Again, I just got these, so I haven't even put them on my magnet cards. The tidings and trimmings bundle. I absolutely love the sentiments in this for the holidays. It's the most wonderful time of the year. We're going to be using wishing you a joyful Christmas and happy new year for this, but we've got the stocking, the star, a number of these little uh, additional embellishments and the stars are awesome. So I used the one that I cut this out of, but there's these intricate pieces that go with it. Love this. I also die cut the holly leaves from evening evergreen and I don't, have the piece out but there is a piece that cuts out six holly berries they're super tiny but really really cute so that is the tidings and trimmings bundle 
in the annual catalog. All right, so the gold and rose gold, but this is the gold one, metallic specialty paper on page 135. So we're gonna start with that guy, and I'm just gonna put liquid glue on the back of him and kind of put them off to a little bit of an angle here. Now I've got a piece of basic white and this measures three quarters by two and three quarters. And using the banners pick a punch, I'm gonna feed that into this, um, I don't even know, that's the banner end. Well, they're banners, but it's the opposite of what we're used to as a banner. So I'll feed that in the tray. That's gonna be the second tray that fits the Three quarters, I like to double check that that's centered back there. Before I punch, we're gonna punch both ends. And stay tuned, we're gonna be doing prize patrol for our live viewers here in a few minutes. All right, so I got that. And this size would be great too, if you wanted to add a sentiment to the side of the box or the lid of the box, so lots of um, options there. And using Cherry Cobbler, we're gonna stamp our sentiment. There we go, wishing you a joyful Christmas and a happy new year. I just used liquid glue for this, but I'm gonna put it on the left side. So just a little bit of glue there. And we'll kind of have that popping off like a tag, sort of uh, lining it up parallel to the top of that triangle. And I've got my two holly leaves. Well, these are big enough for me to hold, but I'm gonna go ahead, I never remember we had a holly bush outside of the house I grew up in, and I can never remember which way the leaves go. You know how there's one end that's a little bit longer? I'm just gonna go with, maybe there's not a right or wrong way. But we'll go ahead and just kind of put those catty corner to each other. The holly leaves are really cute because they've got the little slit down the center that gives them some great texture. Oops. There's those two. And then we've got our matte decorative dots. This was la one of last month's free gifts, which if you're waiting for your free gift, I'm gonna try to get those out this weekend from last month's orders. And I'm gonna do just a little trio of these beauties. I saw these and instantly thought holly berries. Oh, too cute. All right, so there is our tapered triangle treat box. Thanks to Ann Melvin for the inspiration. Love that. And this would be so cute, even with Halloween, Thanksgiving, uh, birthday, you name it. Really cute for favors. It's just an interesting, different gift box. Great for those of you that are doing craft fairs this fall. So there is the triangle tapered triangle gift box. Let's jump into Prize Patrol because I'm on a Christmas kick. I've got two Christmas sets to give away today, the perfectly plaid stamp set. Now, if you're new to Prize Patrol, all you need to do to enter for a chance to win is to leave the comment hashtag Prize Patrol. Make sure you include the hashtag symbol, no spaces, and spell it correctly. That's how you'll get entered for your chance to win. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that, and I'll get my stuff ready to go. I know I put the post-it notes somewhere. Oh, here they are. Got my Prize Patrol post-it notes ready. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. We'll watch those entries come on in. Let me switch to that. You all are awesome. We've got up to 240 already. Um, all right, so recap again. It's the month of September. You can find my host code at thepaperpixie.com. You may have missed it, but it's at the very top now of any page that you visit at thepaperpixie.com. Please use the host code on any order under $150. If your order is $50 or more, you get to choose a free gift for me this month. 
If your order is 150 or more, don't use the host code because you'll earn stamping rewards, but you'll still get to choose a free gift with me. We've got 15 days left of celebration. I can't believe it. That ends September 30th. Again, you can uh, earn free product with purchase amounts as well as with purchasing the starter kit. So I would take advantage of those before those products are gone. I know that the dazzling, be dazzling paper, I believe is gone. Um, you wanna snatch up those sheep dyes as well. Those haven't gone yet, but they are while supplies last as well as the shaded summer dyes. I can't remember if that's what those are called. So let's go ahead and choose our first winner. Drum roll. I love watching all your names pop up on the screen. Brian's doing a little dance over here as the names scroll by. I love how it slows down. It's like, oh, it's, yay, Joanne Gabrielson. Congratulations. You get your name down. Yay, congratulations, Joanne. All right, let's draw winner number two. And hang tight, Joanne. I'll pop up how to claim your prize patrol in just a minute. I love seeing your names. Laura Terry, congratulations. All right, let's see. Get those names on your stamp set. So you have won the perfectly plaid stamp set as well as a handmade card from my stash. Let me pop up here how you can claim your prize patrol. So Laura and Joanne, please visit the paperpixie.com slash prize patrol and uh, put your information in there and I'll get these in the mail to you along with a handmade card from my stash. Thank you all so much for joining me live tonight. Let me go ahead and stop the share here. Um, let's see. I hope you guys have a wonderful and blessed week. I will be live for episode 210 next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, same time, same place. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week, and I hope you give the triangle, the tapered triangle gift box a try. Look out for my blog post on Friday. If you don't want to miss a thing, you can subscribe to receive my blog updates via email. Just go to the paperpixie.com slash subscribe. And anytime I publish a new post, you'll get an email of that post. So this will post Friday with all the details, the template, the measurements, supplies, etc., so that you can go ahead and make it your own. And if you share it on social media with the hashtag paper pixie, hashtag paper pixie, I'd appreciate it. I will be sure to check it out. Have a wonderful and blessed week, and I will see you next Wednesday. Take care. Bye.